Hey YouTubers, I have another Menards review video here, and that is a review of their O-Gauge rolling stock. Now, I've had Menards track. The track is great. I have the Beta 3.0 Santa Fe locomotive. I think it's great, but it does need improving. So this is my first ever purchasing of the Menards O-Gauge rolling stock, and I want to see how it performs against the Lionel that I have here at home. Uh, so I did buy 12 cars, but it's all 12 of the same cars, and here's the reason why. It's because uh, I saw Lionel, they produced the Chessie System uh, freight diesel set, and I think that's model number 6-11705, and I wanted to have a Chessie freight set of my own. So since I already have the three SD40 uh, Chessie Locos here at home, I bought 12 of the Chessie System coal hopper cars. And that's queue number for the car is 279-6274. Uh, but they did make a dealer pack with this, so that dealer pack comes six uh, coal hopper cars into one box. And the box looks like this. You can see here, Chessy Hopper, one uh, pick equals six pack, and it comes in a, box like, in a box like this. So I got two boxes of these. And uh, when you open up the box, you get this little box here. And let's open up and see what's inside. Okay. So here, the Chessy Hopper. is in its own packaging blister pack and uh, it's a basic uh, packaging which is fair enough for the car itself so uh, nothing too shabby. Uh, we open it up. Okay we can see that the car here uh, doesn't look so much to be O gauge but it looks like it's mostly O27 gauge. The plastic seems pretty durable. It seems seems really nice. Uh, they got the coal on top, and if we see here on the sides of the car, just above the trucks, it looks like some sort of compressor tank used for the braking system. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, plastic trucks, we got the knuckle couplers, the thumbtack on here, and the couplers seem pretty strong, kind of firm too. And um, let's see what else we got here. Let's see. Let's see, built by Menards in 2020, right here on the car. And uh, if we turn these over, we could see that the wheels here are shiny uh, compared to a Lionel hopper that I have on my tracks. So I guess it's better conductivity, it looks great. Now if we were to take these cars and put them down side by side onto the table, we can see it's all of the same mold design. So it is an 027 gauge car, it does operate on 027 gauge track. And well, there's not much other than to it other than just the names itself. So the only thing that Menards has with these cars is that you can buy two, three, or four of these cars and they claim that you will never ever have the same number on it on the same car. So here this is uh, B&O 3262. And I opened up all 12 cars and I went through all the numbers and not one call hopper had the same exact number. That's pretty cool. Okay, so however though, the only things I had with this was when you open this up, that right where the uh, the truck part sits into the uh, yellow hopper, you can see that the black part here, it wasn't fully put together. It's not a big deal, I'll just snap it back together. However, when I opened up one of the other cars, I'm checking it out, this one, it was missing a wheel. And of all of them that weren't put together, by the way, that I had six of these that were not put together all the way, I had to put them together. This one was missing a wheel. So I sent an email to Menards asking them if they could send me a wheel. About a week later, Ray got back to me and he said, Ed, I apologize, we will send one out to you immediately. And about a week later, they did send me one, not a wheel, but an actual metal truck with the wheels. So. I'm not going to replace the truck, but it's great that, that, that they sent me this. I mean, all I got to do is just take the wheel off and put it onto, onto the freight car. I mean, their metal truck here it looks, it looks pretty tough. It looks not bad. The wheels move on here very smoothly. Oh, but the wheels on here, yeah, the wheels on this don't really move that smooth. It's almost like they break uh, instantly as soon as you take your finger off. Um, with this here, the coupler on the metal trucks, it's got that metal plate in the bottom, so I guess when you pass over the magnet to uncouple the cars, it'll just uncouple it. 
The only gripe I got about this with this couple piece is that it's hanging lower than the frame of the truck. And that could mean possibly shorting out on the center rail. So I don't have any of these other ones yet. This, this might have been a rejected piece by uh, Menards and that they just gave it to me just for the wheel. So maybe in the future I'll order some of these cars with the metal trucks and then I'll do a review on those. But for right now we're going to focus our attention on these cars. So let's get this wheel off and put it on this car and put it on the track and see how these cars look. So just before I take this wheel off on the truck and put it on the coal car, I just want to see if this truck's going to have any issues going over this switch track. My Menard Santa Fe did have an issue when it went over the center rail on my 072 switch where the thumb tack uncoupler always kept hitting this and bottoming out, creating sparks every time it always shorted out. So I want to see if this uncoupling plate is going to have any issues going over this at all. Now as I rub my finger on the center rail of the switch track, this rivet right here does seem to protrude up a little bit, so I'm wondering if that, if that's, um, if that flat plate underneath the truck is going to catch that. This is the rivet that's into the center rail, and we could just see the uncoupling plate, which is just hovering above the center rail. If I take this over the switch. I don't know if you heard that sound, but that little clink that you heard was the uncoupling plate hitting the center rail rivet, which is right here. And that could be uh, always shortened out every time that it goes over a switch. Okay. So once again, Menards could have sent me a bad metal truck that did not meet their quality standards just to give me a wheel. So that's fine and all. Maybe I'll get some cars in that have metal trucks and I'll do a, a review on them. So for the time being, I took the wheel off and I compared it to a Lionel wheel. Now there's a difference with the axles in between Menards and Lionel. Menards axles are 2 millimeters in diameter while Lionel's is 2.2 millimeters in diameter. So there is a size difference and Lionel wheels will not fit into Menards uh, rolling stock. Now I tried to get the wheel in from the metal truck onto the plastic truck and to my surprise it did not fit. You would have thought one size fits all if one company's making wheels. So what happened was when I spread apart the plastic to put it into the holes of the truck, the truck was permanently pushed outward by the axles because the axles were just too wide for the truck. So what I had to do was I had to take a Dremel tool and I had to cut the tip off of the uh, axle on the Menards wheel to make it fit. Even just cutting off the tips, it didn't work. I had to take it down a little bit more and I had to reshape the axle so it fits inside of the plastic truck of the of the coal hopper. I mean again it was just one wheel so um, it wasn't that big of a deal for me but again I would have thought one size fits all. So now that we got the wheel on let's get this train let, let, let's get this train rolling. So I got all my cars set up onto the track ready to go but before I do that I want to see how much force is required to pull this train. So I got my little fish scale here and we're gonna wait for that to Get started, take off the tear, okay, and see how it goes. You can take about a quarter pound of pull for the freight cars, so not so bad, but uh, it does say to lubricate all moving parts. Uh, on the Menards website for any any of the trains that you get so that they uh, That they do run smoothly. So a quarter pound might seem a bit much for this, but I don't know I'm gonna try up against some of my Lionel stock and see how much that pulls On the inner track next to the Chessie hoppers I have a 12 freight car configuration and they're from the CSX freight set a Lionel orange box car and a Lionel blue and white uh, hopper car along with some cars from the 90th anniversary uh, freight set. So I got the fish scale attached to this and I'm going to see how much the steam force is required to pull this set. Okay. This is a huge difference. I can feel the difference when I'm pulling this. I'm averaging about 0.1 to 0.15 pounds of pulling force to pull this entire train. That's big. So I'm going to lube up the axles on the uh, chassis cars and see if that makes a difference.
I lubricated every axle on all 12 of the chassis hoppers and now let's see how much force is required to pull it. Still about a quarter pound or so, more or less, really. I guess oiling didn't help it at all. Okay, so when in doubt, extreme break-in. So how much force will it require now after extreme break-in? It feels smoother. Slightly less. So I guess that it did help. For my final test, I just want to see how much force is required to pull all 12 of these Chessy System coal hopper cars along with two non-powered SD40 diesel locomotives. Now everything has been oiled, lubed, and everything else, so I just want to see how much power or stress the actual locomotive is going to go through when pulling all of this. Alright, taking off about 0.62 pounds. Okay, so we had about 0 0.3, 0 0.4 to 0 0.46 pounds of pulling force for this whole train. And that seemed kind of much, especially for these plastic coal hopper cars, and should require less force to pull. I mean, half a pound of force is what was used to pull my Santa Fe Warbinet set, and all those cars were aluminum. So, now I got the figures on the cars, let's get this train rolling out and see how it looks running on the tracks. So I backed the train up. I got all cars lined up and I got the three SD40s lined up and I got the power unit towards the back so let's get it rolling. That was cool. Hang on a second. Something wasn't right. I had to stop the train. Uh, apparently when all these hoppers were going over this switch, I saw sparks flying. I first heard it and then I looked over at the train and then I saw sparks flying by. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but uh, I'm gonna investigate this, see what's happening, find out why it's sparking. So let me find out what's happening. One exploratory moment later. Okay, so with a little research, I found out with the Menards car that when it goes over the 027 switch, and if you look carefully at the left wheel, the flange that goes inside the track, it hits the center rail of, of the switch. You can see that right there, and you can see the truck actually turn. This is what was causing my shorts. So it, the, the wheels must not be wide enough like the Lionel trucks. Uh, but before I get into that, let's look at the 072 switch. Even when, when the Menards car goes over the 072 switch, this clears it without a problem. You can see that the flange does not come in contact with that center rail. Even on the turn, it doesn't make any contact whatsoever. Now, I don't know if it's uh, any different than with the 031, 042, 054 switches, or even the 027 gauge 42 inch radius switches. I don't know if those are affected, but I would think that the 027 switches with the 42 inch radius may be affected because they follow the same design. I grabbed one of the Menards freight cars and I took one of the wheels off. The plastic trucks seem to have a more firm plastic than the Lionel's. With the Menards wheel on the left and the Lionel wheels on the right, we can clearly see the difference in the tips and axle diameter on these wheels. If we set these wheels side by side, we can clearly see that these flanges are evenly put together. 
but if we go to the other side of the axle, we can see that the Menards wheels on the left are set in a little more closer than the Lionel wheels on the right. I would probably say about a body thickness of the flange itself, but it's enough to make these cars short out on the center rail of my 027K switch track. Now, if I was to take um, these wheels and put them on the track and push them all the way up against the corner here into the outside of the flange, these wheels will sit very differently on my O gauge track. So this wheel here, the, the, the Menards wheels is going to sit about right at the edge here on my O gauge track, while the Lionel wheels will sit a little more inwards on the track itself. So how do we stop the Menards cars from shorting out on the center rail of the switch track? Well, very simple. I came across this in Home Depot and Lowe's, and for about $9, it's a can called Plastic Dip. This stuff gives you new handle grips on all of your hand tools. So it comes in various colors. It's durable, flexible, and it also electrically insulates. And this stuff, I'm going to take a small paintbrush. I'm going to give two coats of this stuff on the back of the wheels, just so that I don't really see any of the metal showing, even though first coat will cover it. So this way that the wheels will be insulated from the center rail of the switch. Now you may think to yourself, well, why not just coat the side of the of the 027 switch so therefore you know it's just uh, it's less work for yourself that is true but think about the times when all the cars are going to start running over your coated section of the switch it's going to constantly hit it over and over and over again and in time it's going to wear away even though it says it's durable it will not last forever so this way if you put it on the insides of your wheels as your train goes around the table and you switch tracks and go other places on your train table the insides of your wheels will never hit that same switch area twice because you're always going around in different areas. So that's why I'm doing the insides of the wheels. Plus, doing the insides of the wheels on 12 cars, on one side only took me about, let's say 20 minutes or so. I waited a day, I flipped it over, and then I did the other side in about 20 minutes. So, did this fix the problem? Let's find out. So here's my thoughts on the Menards O-Scale Rolling Stock. I think it's a great way to start or expand upon your O-Gauge or O-27 gauge layouts. The cars are very inexpensive. Even if you buy dealer packs, then you do save money. All their O-Scale cars are nicely designed. Even if you go on their website, you know they do have a wide selection of, of cars to, uh, to choose from, except for cabooses, which I don't know why. My coal hopper that I purchased looks like it was from a Lionel mold, so it does give the Lionel feeling that I am running one on a track. However, the negative points I see about this is the friction on the plastic trucks and, then, and the metal axles. There's just too much friction between this and it does limit how long you can run a train and it does require more force for your, for your locomotives to pull this train. No matter how much oil or break-in that, that, that you do with this, it's not going to help it. So again, you are restricted to how long of a train that you can run. Also, the wheels are more narrow than the Lionel wheels. So they will short out on the center rail of the 027 gauge switch. So if you have 027 track and you are upgrading your tracks to either fast track or O gauge track, then I think you are in the clear. 
but if you are going to keep your 027 switches, well, you may want to consider insulating the wheels like I have shown here. So I hope everybody enjoyed the review that I have. It was longer than I anticipated, but you know, again, you know, a review is a review. And uh, before I leave you, here's a video of the Menards cars going through my 027 switches.